Hello, 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 and welcome back to part 7 of Sound of Drop Falling to Poison. And last time we managed to not die for once. Although I did go back and try the other choices, which were um, shaking his hand off or screaming out, if I remember right. Um, trying to loosen his hand just leads to a death scene. Uh, if you call out his name, or scream even, because that leads to one of the options, you then get those three options again, but the top one, instead of screaming, you can call out his name, and then you get a choice between two names. Um, picking either of those, because I did try both, just leads to him killing you. Um, so yeah, the only option to get out was to kick him, which we did do. Um, which, as I said at the time, immediately from the options given I would think kicking the guy <laughs> would be the thing to do and that is what you have to do um, so yes we're in the new area which is a stage and we are now back to trying to find our friend but he is in the staff passageway somewhere so I'm guessing he is going to be a returning bad at some point because he seems to have gone crazy but yeah, I was a little unsure the tunnel part because he was going off to try and help your friend and then he died and things like that. But yeah, now he just seems to have gone mad, mad with the fish. But then as you were running, he said about the smell on your heel being certain people. So it's as if he knows the names of ones that are possibly turned into jellyfish in the past. So yeah. Let's, let's carry on now. Pushing my doubts to the edge of my mind, I head down the stairs for the guest seating towards the stage. Huh? This is? About halfway to the stage, I found a booklet on top of the seat that is thick enough to contain about 50 pages. Mantan Aquarium Guidebook is written on the front cover. That's all I see, just the name and nothing else. This has a map inside. Okay, so that's the souvenir I'm guessing with the bag. So you were there, and now you've managed to bypass that and get over to there. Which seems good. Not in the fish gun tunnel. I suddenly realised as I'm finishing my sentence, since my friend has her own map, this is definitely going to come in handy. Uh, I don't see why this would be bad, but you never know in this game. I try and read a little more. Coming through the pages, I see that I that it has an introduction to the Mantan Aquarium. Other than that, there are bits of trivia about the fish on display, like the whatever fish is the biggest freshwater fish, or that orca communicate through ultrasonic waves. I want to read through this later. I don't want to part with the guidebook. I detach the map from it. Not knowing what else, not knowing what might happen. Just making up my own words now. I come to the conclusion that I don't want to carry anything bulky. Okay. Suppressing my desire to sit down and read it, I return the guidebook to the seat. So I'm guessing if we did nothing, we would have taken the whole thing. staff room. There might be someone there. On weeknights they hold the adult targeted Mantam Aquarium exploration tours. It's sudden, it supposedly shows off the other side of the Mantan Aquarium. The sexy side of fish. Ah yeah! 
for that expedition pathway that customers are normally unaware of are printed in the guidebook. According to the map, there appears to be a staff waiting area. It seems they don't stop there on the expedition tours, but the place itself is printed on the map. If I go there, someone might be there. It might also be the crazy guy that, you know, lost his mind a moment ago. Looking at the map, I wonder which way I should go as I follow the route. It seems there are two paths to the staff room. The first path is through the passageway I went through earlier, and the other seems to be through an underground passage connected to the inside of the shed on the stage. God. Even though it's labelled as underground, it is more accurate to say it is our one floor down. I still don't know how that dude is. So I think I should take the latter path. I'm scared after all. My friend, where are you? Lowering my defences, these weak-hearted words well up inside me. I mumble them as I step onto the stage. Following those words, anxiety decreases inside upon me, or descends upon me. May I am right here. No way. My friend. I doubt that voice which seems ready and waiting for me was an illusion. No way. That's cruel, cool, may you? Imenu, Imenu. I can hear her voice, but I can't see her. Where is she? I think as I glance about the stage. She is nowhere to be found. That's right, inside the shed. When the shed on the edge of the stage enters my line of sight, I, I had for it a double speed. The floor is wet enough that it seems I should slip, but somehow I hold on and move forward. The inside of the shed is as if a waiting area and a warehouse had been combined into one room. The fishy stench is probably from the stains from food used during the shows in the past. I had seen a fish thrown to the sea lion that caught a ball with its nose. Himeno, himeno. At the edge of the shed is a plain metal chair against the wall. Himeno is leaning against the back in which, in what appears to be a state of total exhaustion. May you? I, I have so much to say to you, my friend, because I... Seeing her face, any thoughts of our argument are completely blown out of existence. Words that found no form are forever pushed away. The fact that she is already... She is already... The fact that she is alright all on its own makes me happy. It's fine. First of all, calm down. Oh. But didn't that guy start saying calm down a lot before he went mental? Himeno, what's wrong? Oh. <laughs> May you don't make that face. There is nothing to worry about. She's just turning into a fish. I have lots of things to say to you, Himeno, but my words get caught in my throat. Seeing her breathing heavily, my own pulse quickens as I stand there forgetting how to breathe. She lays a hand on my chest. Even when she had a cold, she would still come to school with a smile on her face. 
When she got injured at a club, she wouldn't take time off from the gym classes. That's why, even in this aquarium, I thought somewhere in my heart that she would be fine. If only we could reunite, surely she'd laid with a smile. We'd go home side by side. That had been my hope. I'm sorry, me. I, I, I don't think I can make it. It's so easy for Hinamo's soft compliments or complaints to punch me right in the heart. With just one phrase, I dropped to my knee in front of her. Him, Himmy. May you get up. I won't, no, because. I shake my head at her words. I can't remain standing, not while seeing my precious friend like this and hearing her frail voice. Every time she speaks, she spews white. Nematropes? Nematropes from her mouth. I'm not sure if she's aware of it or not. But thin creatures that look like mole worms wriggle at her feet. With a clatter, she seems as though she might fall from the chair. I support her from under her arm, propping her up. She's being eaten alive from the inside by weird, weird worm things. Thank you. Don't thank me. What happened? The body is hot. The same as when I had a 104 degree fever. No higher than that. Because you're also now a thermometer. I'm glad I got to see you again. But I don't want you to see me in this state. Oh. Unable to finish what she was saying, she coughs up several worm things along with some spit. I don't want to see it, not necessarily because it's weird or disgusting, I just want, don't want to see her this way. Let's go to hospital, we'll eat ice cream alright? <laughs> That's probably impossible now. Hearing that word, or hearing the words that had fallen intersexually from her mouth, she smiles back at me. Even as I ignore the lie in her smile, I've still become aware of it. It's not impossible! May you. It's not impossible. I'll take you to hospital, okay? So let's to go. Thanks. That you feel that way. Fills me up. I think you're already filled with worms by the looks of it. It's not just my feelings, got it? Can you stand? Don't overdo it, okay, may you? That's alright. I wanted to apologise to you. In an attempt to lend her my shoulder, I take her arm, but she quickly brushes me off. Her hands are shaking. Despite this, she reaches into her pocket and pulls out the keychain. That's... Yeah. By the way, when I fought back to when I picked it up, it most likely wasn't yours, may you? I'm such an idiot. You're not. It was because I didn't listen to at all to what you said. So, I, because I was so convinced you had dropped it, may you? Thinking back. <coughs> She's repeating the same thing over and over. Himeno's consciousness must be getting hazy. She is bleeding from like the eyes. Every time, you know, gets 
choked up, she vomits up various butums of living bugs. Even so, I can't look away from her. I get the feeling that if I don't look at her face, I will never again see her smile. I don't think I'm being overdramatic or anything of the sort. Since I had never heard someone throwing up bugs. <laughs> uh, I'd never heard of someone doing that either. Here, you take it, may you? Uh, the keychain? Yeah. There seems to be no mistake. Someone dropped it. That's why. Give it back to them. Give it back? That's... We're going back together, right? Manten Aquarium is small. Surely we'll find them right away, won't we? Jeez me, you idiot. Can't you tell by looking? There's no way I can go home. No, don't, Hinamo. If you say that, it'll come to pass. She places the keychain in my palm and softly places her hand once more on my shoulders. She moves her hands from there to the back of my head and with a light feathery like sensation she pulls me close to her. May you get home no matter what. That hug lasts only a few seconds then she lightly pushes me away. I couldn't take it. If I infected you, oh, just just leave me here. <laughs> right at the end of the sentence, uh, right at the end of her sentence, fades away. Her head flops forward. No way! No way! No way! No way! Her body with her eyes shut and not even one fingertip moving is hot. Even so, she wouldn't turn her smile my way. She wouldn't respond to my voice. No way. There's just no way. Without a second thought, I hold Himeno. She said I might get infected, but that doesn't matter to me. What it should do with all the things we've done to try and keep you alive. Having rolled up inside her mouth, things crawl about Hinamo's puffed up lips. Experiences, experiencing feelings of intense denial, I wipe away a whatever it is and crush it. A murky green liquid remains on my finger. I quickly rub it off on the floor. She's moving? With her chest so close to mine, I can feel a pulse. No mistake, it's a heartbeat. Pulling away from her, my trembling hand somehow lands on her left breast. Having snuck into that softness, I definitely feel a pulse going Bada bum, bada bum. <laughs> She's alive, Hinema, I'm so glad. Just like that, I forgot about rubbing off the filth and sat down. Even with the bugs getting into her body, as long as she is alive, I think it can work out somehow. I wouldn't even consider the possibility of it not working out. I can't think of a concrete way to save her. Within my completely blank mind, there is only anxiety and fear. Part of me feels she's just going to burst open with like bugs everywhere. Having slumped more than sat down, a third person's voice reaches my ear. Uh, words I can't say... They aren't supposed to infect humans. I wonder what exactly could cause something like this to happen. <laughs> if the situation wasn't what it is, I would immediately 
preserve some of them in a petri dish. What? From behind me, a cold voice interrupts my thought. In contrast with the feverish Hinamo, the voice cl clings coolly to the nape of my neck. It's a woman's voice I've never heard. It's a pity I cannot collect these precious samples. I don't have the luxury of time right now. I must find that child quickly. Um, who the hell are you? My, what a cute girl. What is it? Might you have come to the aquarium to have fun with your friend? Aquarium? This is the Manten Aquarium, right? That's right. Me and the corpse, or soon to be corpse, over here. So this girl, she's called Hinamano Chan, right then? The woman looks to be in her thirties, her blue eye shadow leaving quite the impression. Her appearance, coupled with her calm manner of speaking, both tells me she must be quite mature. Her light coloured hair is collected into an updo and her suit is impeccably chosen. Those clothes, um, could you be an aquarium staff member? Yes, I am. More names I'm not going to say. At this aquarium I am, I suppose, a representative of the director. Like a vice director? A little bit different. It would take some time to explain. More importantly, you should move away from her. Huh? She's called by a name with a... Corkish tone? It gives me the impression of being very forced. Crossing her arms as she looks down at me, the woman narrows her eyes. Would it be easier for you if I used the word... Infection. You have a wound on your leg, don't you? It's as if their fertility has intensified, meaning there are probably eggs amongst all that as well. What? She doesn't appear to be dead, but it is only a matter of time. You can no longer save her. Thus, please wait a second. It's fine to leave her like that. After I finish with my business, I'll take her with me as a sample. The corners of her mouth widen as so she says this. My fear of this woman is even greater than the, my anger at my friend being referred to as a sample. Even though someone right in front of me in front of my heart, eyes might die. She is smiling. How in the world can she make that face? Because I can't understand. She seems terrifying to me. Please wait. If you're a member of staff, then can't you take me to the building's first aid room? I'll call an ambulance or something, since she's still alive. Seems that you care for her a great deal. So try to imagine this. If you die because of her, think of how she would feel. But she's alive. Please don't say something like that. I'm begging you, please save her. I'm not a doctor. It's not possible. Moreover, I don't think the rescue workers would want to respond to such a hopeless call. She says this bluntly in a cruel voice. Her voice is colder than the first time I heard it. Water, like water that has frozen over. She can't be saved anymore. Every time those words come from her mouth, my pulse grows louder and quicker. My blood is rushing through me fast, enough for my veins to be worn down from within. That's not good enough. Please, save her. Please save her friend. Before I know it, I'm facing her and pleading. However, my desperate pleas are being shattered by her cruel smile. I don't like disobedient children. 
I also have work to do, important work that matters. You have work? This place isn't normal. Isn't that something a staff member should get? After fear makes a leap through me, I push aside my emotions. Leaping over my fear and anxiety towards this woman, I wholeheartedly just want to save my friend. Not normal? Whatever do you mean? As aquariums also serve as research institutes, the situation itself isn't normal, is it? I don't understand at all. That's enough. No matter how many times I spend here, or how, how much time I spend here, it won't help. If you wish to join me, you are free to do so. Free to join you? Aren't you staff here? Are you saying you don't know anything about the aquarium filled with nothing but phenomenon? I don't understand a word of what you are saying. Are these good things? I'm telling you I'm going now. If you wish to die along with her, then just sit there staring about like that. Later I'll study you in full as well, though one sample is more than enough. I shudder as a chill runs down my spine, or up my spine. I'm finally able to understand that this isn't a joke, that she is saying she sincerely doesn't care about whether my friend lives or dies. Wait, please. You have wasted enough of my time. I must hurry up and find that child. The last bit of what she says is inaudible, inaudible as she runs out from the small room of the stage. Being neither harmful nor harmless, that's the type of person she is. Thinking she could point me down the one path that leads away from my friend and I dying together. With just one phrase, I am thrust down to, to rock bottom. My friend can't be saved. That single phrase bounces around my head numerous times. No, no, no. Turning it over in my head with such frequency, the truth she had stated is becoming engraved upon my heart. I can no longer hear the click clack sound of her high heels. Instead, what resonates is the sound of drops falling from my eyes. I. If you're having doubts, then just die. Huh? Who? It's a girl's voice, much younger than the other woman, around the same age as me, in fact. I turn towards the voice coming a short distance away from where I'm holding Himeno. A slender girl who is a little taller than me, with eyes a slightly different colour than that woman's cold eyes, looks down at me scornfully. Her long hair is tied back, dangling behind her like a tail. She's a bit different than Himenamu, but is still a girl in fashionable attire. I watch her with cautious interest as she glares at me. What's this all of a sudden? Who knows? I'm just annoyed with you, since I hate people who are so wishy-washy. Wishy-washy? You think you can just show up and know how I'm feeling? I don't know. I'm not interested. I feel irritated that this girl knows nothing about my circumstances. Showing up with all these complaints to f think that that woman left and now this. She is directing her futility or futile patience at me as well. The girl is calm, but speaking fast, hearing such a tone, I can't go on without saying something back. If you're not interested, then why did you speak to me? More importantly, you haven't gotten swept up in anything dangerous, have you? Who knows? What's with that answer? Just say what you want to say, how mean. 
the girl started speaking to me, it raises hope somewhere inside me. Briefly hold out hope that she's talking to me because she knows somehow to save my friend. That's why I begin to feel something more than just irritation towards the girl who has come to kick me while I'm down. That girl's going to get eaten up by the bugs and die, right? But parasites aren't all that quick or effective. What are you? Because it's this Mantena Aquarium, she will die. If it were me, that's what I would think. Then what are you saying? My heart begins to beat fast at her words. Now I regret placing so much hope in this girl. Nevertheless, from her way of speaking, could it be that? If you get out of here, there may be a way to cure her. If it comes down to crying and dying, I would fight back rather than giving in. Cure her? Just now you said cure her, right? Really? But that staff member earlier said she could no longer be saved. I don't know, there's no guarantee that she could be saved, but the one who said she couldn't be saved was an employee of the aquarium, right? Not a doctor. Not a doctor. She seemed like she knew a lot about parasites, but sure enough, that woman was no doctor. She said it so herself. And the girl said something previously that caught my attention. Earlier you said this Mantana Aquarium, right? What is this place? If you know, then tell me. Don't take me for a fool. But I don't know. Since this is an aquarium where nothing but dangerous things happen, I want to know how to get out of here. I cannot say, my friend. Which path you take is completely up to you. I don't have any more time to worry about other people. I'm just saying if it's where... I'm just saying if it were me, I wouldn't quit until I was dead. Upon making her blunt assertions, the girl heads for the innermost part of the shed. Somewhere in contrast to the employee earlier, she had entered from the side of the stage. If you don't have time, then why are you encouraging me? Encouraging me? Upon saying those words, I've got an awkward feeling. The cutting assertion she made me in a blunt tone and the words she said to me weren't exactly kind. However, I found them kind in that moment. It isn't that I can't save her, nor is it guaranteed that I can. Having received even a small amount of hope, my tears have stopped. I told you already, I was just getting annoyed. Without looking back, the girl walks away. Sitting on the ground, huddled close with Hinamino, I think over the two possibilities in my mind. Since, saying, since it's unlikely that I can save her, should I just stay here with her for a second longer? Or should I believe the girl's word and escape from this danger filled aquarium? Two possibilities balancing on the scale. Well, I think that's a good point to stop right there. I'm assuming if I stay with her, I die because, like, there are worms and stuff on the floor. And apparently they said I've already got an injury on my leg. So they would get inside me and I would die like she did with them multiplying in my body. But yeah. We will find out next time. I'm probably going to go for a look for a way out because, yeah, staying there seems like a bad thing. But, yeah, thank you, everyone. Bye for now and see you all soon.